Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today let's take a look again at this pill camera we turned on uh, two videos ago roundabout. And let's yeah, make a deeper dive and see what we might find inside of not only the hardware. And stay tuned for the end. Maybe we are successful. So, while we only got one of the pill camera PCBs, I started on using a different PCB to just try to glitch it uh, with the yeah, help of a bit of ship whisperer, toggling and UART printing of the current state. So while glitching there is running a custom firmware on it and every time it successfully glitches we can also observe it. And this is just to get into where to glitch. So we have here basically like the boot sequence and if we roundabout glitch here it sometimes has access to JTAG and the next step is now to replace the PCB with each other and dump out the full flash from the pill camera. Well this did work better than expected. After just around four to five minutes of glitching the real PCB was successfully glitched and we got a perfectly fine dump of the flash, which now can be reverse engineered to find out how the CC1310 talks to the yeah, receiving side, the monitor, and maybe get some pictures out of this camera. This was a nice journey and finally the Texas Instruments CC chips are under full control, I would call it. Which now means every CC two, six, four, and so on, and one, three, and so on can be dumped, if not too new. Very nice. That's quite uh, the step forward to a fully functioning camera. I mean, yeah, it's quite the mess right now, but it will get there at some point. I did now take a look inside of the firmware and reverse engineered it quite a lot and was able to basically create uh, or find out the right data to create a sniffer for it. And for that I'm using the Texas Instruments own tools and NCC1310 as a receiver. But right now you can see it's not sending anything because the camera is still in sleep mode. And to wake it up we really have to use this yeah, light sensor and by shining just a light onto it, you can see that the current consumption goes up every now and then. And if I hit just the right spot, you can see it's really activating. And the camera is also transmitting data. This is right now with 300 kilobits per second. And it's uh, basically just like information data, a bit of header. You have like a TX counter, an RX counter behind it. You have like the ID of the camera, which would be C153, a CRC and some more values. This is also now done at 868 megahertz and there is a flag inside of the camera to be a US version for 920 megahertz. And yeah, the natural next step was of course to talk back to the camera. And by reverse engineering the firmware further, I was able to write a custom one. And this is basically like listening for this information and then sending back the correct data to, in this case, activate the real camera module. And it was quite a mess to get it working because the camera data itself is sending with 4 megabytes per second and the other status info is just with this 300 kilobytes per second. But if I now just basically boot the custom firmware, via this, you can see the camera is having a current yeah, increase at every now and then. And here you can see the other SOC. And what is happening now is you see also here you have like the status info and every now and then the answer from the custom firmware. And then the camera answers with this four megabytes per second data of real camera data we just now need to decode it somehow and best would be like a mini web tool to just so the, show the image. Let's see where it goes. And yeah, after that we can also assemble it again. 
Uh, I did take a look inside the firmware for other stuff and it's just like setting the power output for the RF transmission, setting the channel of the RF transmission and such. So no, not even a firmware update is included. They do have some, I think like FCC test modes where the camera will, camera will be transmitting for like endless. Uh, or receive for endless time and yeah let's see if we can get some images out of it well 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 would you look at that so after now way too much time trying to figure out what the image encoding mechanism is it turns out it is just simply jpeg just without the header and as Larry mentioned, it's most likely meant to be MJPEG then, so a video format for it. And as you can see, we can fully receive the image from the camera via RF and the CC1310. It is received by the other CC1310 and passed by the, by this super simple web tool. And yeah, as you can see it tries to decode the image and every now and then you can see it's also basically failing but I'm quite happy with it and it's really like an impressive fisheye lens they made into it and yeah you can do some settings like zoom and resolution settings as well and I played a bit around with it but I'm happy like it is now and will not do anything much further than this because from a zero or unknown camera to this it's quite nice. Um, I also found out that this camera is made by the company called Ankong and as in my last video shown this big magnet inside is really for a super big machine that they use um, from the outside to control basically the pill in your body in any direction they want and yeah quite impressive what they have done there and that they just use this as a very universal camera to yeah for once just give it to patients and then in a normal situation you will get like a belt you put on and in this belt there are somewhat like 10 of the receiver and that way they can also know where in your body the camera exactly is because of triangulation with multiple antennas you can just figure that out as well and yeah i hope you like this journey i definitely did i will yeah just put it down in the drawer now as a fully reverse engineered hardware bye